Thank you so much for checking out Tea and a Butty on YouTube. For exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron. Details are in the link of this video's description, and please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. <laughs>
I assume so. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, um, you mentioned, <clears throat> you mentioned before when we weren't recording, um, the, I keep wanting to call him Arthur. His name is Alfred. King Alfred in The Last Kingdom, he's kind of standing there sometimes when he's, when he's not being king, king. Yeah. You know, when he's just yeah. talking to his wife or whatever in the scenes like they're in their bedroom or something and he's wearing like what you described as basically it looks like a long nightgown it's like a long nightgown yeah it's like but it's linen isn't it yeah and it's like yeah it's like a linen nightgown and it goes down to like the knees and stuff and that's what i associate with like bed yeah clothes, well know? yeah 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 you know but it's like that's what they would wear i guess they when they take off the wall and everything and that you know that was the under thing mm. and men could wear it I mean, of course women wearing that was like oh you know just that yeah because i mean the the women wore like a tunic that was kind of similar to what the man was wearing but it was longer and it had a semi-circular mantle fastening on the shoulder Okay. Whatever that. Ugh. Whatever that is. <laughs> Whatever that is. Yeah, cuz I mean, I don't know. If we have any like fashion experts chime in here for for us, will you? <laughs> and apparently the lady covers her long hair with a hood held by a band and would carry a traveling pouch. So a bit like um a hairnet type thing. Yeah. Yeah, bind it all up. Yeah, I mean they showed that in the last kingdom as well. Yeah. But what I meant at the beginning of this is I don't know is it is it or or did I say that out loud was it just in my head we'll never know unless we rewind this was this just British fashion or was this like worldwide for the period I imagine do we, do I, I, I don't know I mean this is just says British fashion I mean okay so, so they're assuming that Britain was the only country in the world at that point <laughs> well let's let's say well, no, let's say the Romans had already been there. And let's think about movies that we've seen from, like, of set in Roman times. Yeah. I mean, they wore, like, a similar... It was just lo- it was just long gowns, wasn't it? There was no, like, pants or anything, It was skirts was a lot, yeah. They wore, like, It was like skirts. their legs were out and stuff. It was just kind of like, oh, we just need a look. It's, you know, like, cavemen. If mm-hmm. you go back to, like, Neolithic times. Yeah. Cavemen. They were just like, oh, we need we need some sort of fabric to cover up our dangly bits. Basically. And, and, it, wasn't, and it wasn't for modesty. No. It was just for protection. protection yeah. It's like someone needs to invent shoes, man. You know? <laughs> and so they invented, like, leather shoes, like, you know, killing animals and just skinning them. It's, oh, the, these are quite tough. We can use these for yeah. shoes. Stick them on your feet. Stick them on your feet to, like, avoid the thorns and mm. rocks and everything. And, you know, and, and apparently wet feet was a very big problem back yeah. then. So it was like, yeah, if your feet get wet, that's it. You're dead. You're dead, basically. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so, you know, it was just the basic kind of like tunic that covered the whole body. And it kept, you, you know, it had the added thing of keeping you warm in like winter and stuff, you know. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if they would have had like underpants back then or anything like that. They would have thought like, oh, yeah, underpants. We need some of them, you know. Uh, I wouldn't think so. You know, and obviously not bras or anything like that, you know. I mean, let's let's go back to The Last Kingdom because I'm sure that we saw, and I don't know how correct this is, but I'm sure that we saw Alfred wearing on top of that tunic like a long floor, like almost floor length, probably like a leather type vest i you could really yes. call it a tunic also but it would have been sleeveless and you would have worn he would have worn it on top of um or actually like row like a like a robe wasn't it it was kind of like a robe yeah yeah and that's sort of almost like what you could have seen jesus in or yeah like any, something you know yeah I mean? it was like, a, and they just crossed it like it was a all robe like yeah what Je- we were all wearing what jesus was wearing yeah yeah, yeah. i think that's or what they what they were told, or what they saw in their art, or yeah. whatever, you know. Um, but I think it was a thing that would cross across the waist, just like a just like a robe or a dressing gown for any British listeners. Yeah. And you would tie it with a tie to keep it closed. You know, they'd have like a bit of rope or a tassel or something like that tied around the waist. But no, I don't. I can't imagine there were underwear at the time. No. <laughs> the also it also says the Anglo Saxons were known for their skill in embroidery and braid weaving. Mm. 
so they would have had trims and stuff, you know. It's very decorative. <laughs> it's a, a little bit of a decorative trim, just to look cute. <laughs> just to look cute. Yeah. In in my uh, Anglo-Saxon time. But yeah, moving along to like the Tudor Stuart era, which is like the medieval times that everybody knows, you know. Yeah. Castles and whatever. Um, then the men would start wearing an overgown with full upper sleeves, adding breadth to his shoulders. So yeah, like that kind of like Henry the Eighth kind of thing, you know, where it was like puffed out shoulder, puffed out sleeves, and, yeah, you know, and um, and that was fashionable from about fifteen twenty. And he had a doublet. Um, I guess a doublet. I don't know what a doublet is really, but it's just like um. I can. I guess it's like a tunic. I don't know. I'm not sure what a doublet is, but, but yeah, again, where did that come from? You know, the puffy sleeves. It's like, yeah. I get that that's like, oh, make your, make your arms look big and yes. like bulky and you look, you know, you look more, um, threatening, I guess, yeah. because you just look like you have a bigger body because at that time, obviously people were really thin, you know, they yeah. did not eat. Half as much as we eat today, or or as le- at least not. The I think crap Henry the Eighth. Yeah, and and they were little and as they, well. They, they were, were very little. Well, people. and they were very active as well. They were much more active. Well, like, yeah. I mean, there was no. You, you didn't have stuff. You didn't have really like any comfort to sit about. I mean, there was stuff to be done. Yeah. It was like, oh, you know, we'll do that later. You yeah. know, we'll get to the business of doing that later. Let's just have a nap. <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah. or whatever, you know, just sit down and watch TV, you know, yeah. or whatever, you know, it's just like, it's it's like the entertainment was out there fighting the war and running about, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in the doublet, yeah, but I mean, also, most, half of your day was taken, you know, like you were talking about Danny Dyer doing the, um, doing the Henry VIII being yeah. medieval or whatever, you yeah. know. Dan- and, you know. Tell them who Danny Dyer is. Danny Dyer. <laughs> He's a, a Cockney geezer, isn't he? From uh, he's a soap star from EastEnders, and I think he presents some game show now on on TV in the UK. But he's known for his Cockney geezer accent, you know. Yeah. Um, and he he went on Who Do You Think You Are, and it he he was related to like Henry the Seventh or something. They found out he was related to the royal family in some distant form. Yeah. And he was just like, and everybody was just like, oh, what? Danny Dyer is related <laughs> to the royal family. Of course he is, you know. And he's like, diamond, diamond. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So they did like a little thing where he went back and says, oh, my ancestors would have worn this, you know. Yeah. So he traced them back as far as he could. As I he guess, could, and yeah. And he's, it's like he's some sort of like. And they were like, put cousin, him, yeah. put him in the clothes. Put him that, in the clothes, yeah. you know, get to live a little in them. So you know, he's putting on these hose, yeah. which are like, you know, he's putting on the, the breeches, the he's putting short on the pants, yeah, the, the the thing, and he's been dressed and dressed, and he's like, God, all these layers, you know, yeah. for like, and that would have taken half your day because doing he put all on that. the he put on the thing with the puffy sleeves, yeah. you know, and then they put like a long, they put like a long thing on top of that, that was like a long jacket vest yeah. jacket and you need thing. like a bustle and a skirt i guess it's a doublé you know a doublet or whatever you know it's like it's loose with a seam at the waist and skirts yeah and you know upper stocks breeches you know mm. are separate from his hose for greater comfort so you know it's like they had hose on and breeches and, and then i know. remember then he had on like a cape on yeah. top of that and then they put on just like a big piece of animal hide on yeah, him, on him. Like, and he's just like ah he's like yeah this is heavy I, I can't even move it's like and i think a hat of course but and then of course the cod piece oh yes that's cod the piece. weirdest thing all right you have to like go in in a little bit of depth explaining what this is all about because i remember seeing it in like some paintings that we studied years ago but i I think it just went out of my mind after that. I mean, and I, totally I didn't really do much into so why, where, why it kind of thing. I think it well, was. What just, is it though? What? It's just, it? it's just, it's like a cup. Yeah. For your manhood. <laughs> and you know, it's kind of like shaped like a banana. It's shaped. It's sh- <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you can get them in varying sizes. They were 
course. But I mean, you know, it's just for you to stand about like that, you know, like, with your hands on your hips and just wiggling it. They literally like strapped it on. They strapped. They, st- they strapped it on. Yeah, I mean, you can have like one that's like modest, but usually people would have like big ones. The more you know, wealthy, the, the, the more probably. wealthy, like Henry the Eighth would have a big one, and you know. I- they put this thing on Danny Dyer, you guys, and it was just like, he looks kind of normal standing from the front, and then he turns to the side, and it's just like sticking out it's sticking under the out. skirt, right? No, I think it's, it's on top. top it's skirt. on top of everything, yeah. Okay, and it just sticks out like that, and I'm just like, what in God's name? The God piece. What? And it's like it's become Why? a joke down the years about men who wore, wore cod pieces, you know? What did people think? think back then i just do not understand how that was a thing like how could you be taken seriously i don't know what in god's name went through people's minds i don't even know well i mean apparently i mean it must have been something if you look further into it it must have been something that they were doing in europe it's like oh this is all the rage in france yeah this is all the rage in ireland you know it's it's this is all the rage in um you know, Spain. I think Spain is where it came from. I can see it coming from Spain. <laughs> oh, sure. Or Blame Italy. the Spanish. <laughs> you know, Italy or, Italy or Spain. You know, well, I mean, Italy wasn't a thing back then. I think it was just all kind of like Rome. Rome, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, this is, this is the big fashion, you know. So everybody had that, you know. And, and the shirts as well were like black silk. Or silk with small frills at the neck, which would eventually develop into the ruff. Yeah. You know, everybody has the ruff, you know. Obviously, stuff became more, like, flamboyant and uh, the materials became a bit more exotic and stuff. So, obviously, they were getting imports. Uh, Obviously, some of these things were due to um, traveling from people from other places yeah and they were coming I mean? back like, you know they were coming back and saying this is the fashion now people are doing this weird thing so we're gonna do it you know yeah. and it was just like oh yes let's do it the king's wearing it yeah so you know and then and the you cod know, piece i think probably originally was literally like a cup it was to protect yourself yes and then it was just like oh who's is big who who's, needs the uh, bigger one you yeah. know oh well the king's has to be the biggest you know yeah so everybody the... was like oh yeah all the lords started getting in on it you yeah know? probably and so everybody I mean, started... we've totally just made that up yeah i mean we're just we're just kind of <laughs> hypothesizing here but it, it seems logical. plausible yeah um yeah, but I mean, the women until Queen Elizabeth came in looked much the same as they did in like uh, Anglo-Saxon times. I think you know, yeah, with everything. But when she came in, she had like, you know, like those portraits you've seen of her with like the stiff dress mm. and everything. You know, it's like, um, and the ruff and everything. She had the same kind of and the puffy wide sleeves. skirt and the bolsters and. The drum farthingale, you know, all these all these things that they had to put on the Queen Queen Elizabeth the First, you know, to yeah. make her look queenly. If you think of the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland, yes. I mean she was basically modeled after Queen Elizabeth with the mm. the really big puffy skirt and I think it looked like it was just stiff as anything. I don't know what it was made of or if they put something on it to do that. And then of course everything was like jewel encrusted, wasn't it? Yes. I mean, in, the, in the, the portrait they showed, it was um, of this woman. The sleeves are wide and the neckline low, yeah. with rough open to frame the face. It is trimmed with lace newly introduced from Flanders and Spain, which was Belgium and Spain. Oh, yeah. And, and Holland, I guess. Uh, her pleated fan is a new fashion from China. Um, fashionable ladies no longer wore a cap and her uncovered hair is dressed high with ribbons and feathers. So yeah. yeah, very much like Queen Elizabeth's was, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So she had all that, and that's that's pretty much how everything remained throughout the Charles explain, era. Explain. Well. Ex- you mentioned the rough. Explain what that is, just for anybody who doesn't know. It's it's a thing. It's like a it's collar. Like, it's like a collar. Yeah, yeah, it's a collar that goes that, that I think is separate from the shirt, mm-hmm. and it goes on. And people had like you know small ones, or they had big ones, you know, like. But some people, like, I think they made fun of it in, like, Blackadder the second. Like, you know, Percy had this massive ruff. So, you know, and it was rough, like, I think, is probably short for ruffle because it's, it's a ruffle. the way it it's, was gathered. 
Yeah, it looks kind of like a fan. Like a fan, like an accordion. Like an accordion. And yeah. it looks very stiff. And it's like... Oh, they look so uncomfortable. They, they look, look like, why okay. did these people wear this stuff? Uh, Shakespeare. That's the most Shakespeare. famous yeah, person that you he's associate got a, yeah, with Yeah, he's that. got a rough... Yeah. yeah, I mean, he was around... That was the, that was the, the fashion back then, you mm-hmm. know? The roughs and everything, you know? Um, but I mean, that kind of remained all the way through the, the Tudor, the Stuart era, you know, with Charles II but, and, you know, that's the and all of the Cromwell and all the, and like, the Commonwealth and everything. Like the, the normal women were probably just looking totally like peasants. I mean, I can't imagine that oh, the normal women wore anything but even the, the, remotely similar They just to looked that. like they had since the Norman times. <laughs> You know, I think it was just like the, there Poor was no women. There was nothing to like, you know, like oh, you know, there was nothing for them. You know, I can imagine like you know if you're wearing this fantastic dress and everything with the silks imported from Spain and China fan and everything like that, and you went to a peasant town, they'd look at you like you were some sort of like crazy person. Oh yeah, they'd be like, "What are you wearing?" I mean, really, it's they like, did oh, this look is like crazy fun. people, though, didn't well, they? Well, they did. Yeah, I mean, to us now, it's like, oh, what, what, what were they thinking? And the powdering, they powdered their powdered skin their face so and putting the beauty marks on. Yeah, and I mean, well, that takes us into the Georgian Regency era with the Louis the Fourteenth or someone like that. You know, with the big powdered wigs mm-hmm. that became big news in britain everyone wore them all the gentry and everything you know like in the captains of the army the judges the navy it was the fashion yeah it was like a hat yeah you know yeah. it was like you put on that like powdered wig and you just had the little curls little, and everything in the back you know little pony and it's tail like in the back. it was fine for like bald men i guess you know because they could wear it all the time but you know it was like that was, you know, even men with like hair, full heads of hair, would like slick it back and put that wig on, you know, and just be like, oh yes, this is this is wonderful, yeah, <laughs> you know. So it's yeah. like, oh yes, I'm in society now, you know. And I have to think that the women must have been wearing wigs too, because women, the, yeah, the women were probably wearing as high wigs, or at and, least hair pieces, um, like pinned into their hair, because the way they wore, like, you know how they, um. Marge Simpson in The Simpsons, you know, she's got that, supposedly it's a beehive, but it's like, it's like an extreme version of a beehive, you know, that's more similar to like the way women wore their hair in this period of time. And it's just like, how did they get their hair (laughs) to like defy (laughs) gravity? Yeah, to defy gravity. To stay on their head. And it looked just like so much hair. Like who has that amount of hair? You know, there's so many curls and then they'd have flowers in there and like feathers and all kinds of things just like coming out. And then at the back, just one little curl (laughs) coming down coming down the back of their neck you know i mean it depends it, it and of, obviously it depends with like you know if you were like a duke or a lord or whatever you'd have this long flowing hair you know like with curls and everything like that you know just this long wig and everything yeah and some would have like this the short like you know wig with just the tiny curls and everything like that but yeah the women's hair was like marie antoinette it was all up there and whoosh you know like really big i mean obviously it all was to show status i guess you know it was status to show wealth to show status like the bigger your hair is (laughs) the the more wealthy you are i guess and this is the you know this is like the most famous you know this is the one that because jane austen and you know the bronte sisters and all that wrote stuff in this era Mm. and illustrations and everything and paintings and stuff so it was like this is this is an era of fashion that's well known to like the the modern day yeah yeah. because they're showing it in you know like emma and um pride and prejudice and sense and sensibility and all that kind of stuff you know the, the men with their frilly shirts and tight britches and mr darcy you know yeah and, you know, the women in their kind of like, you know, one piece dresses and, you know, and it's all very like the fan and the, the, of course the wigs and everything, you know. Yes. I mean, I think the informal day dress, uh, there was an illustration taken from a, a portrait of Bo Brummel. If you know who Bo Brummel is, he was this big guy in the, in the back in the day. He was a famous dandy. Oh, yeah. And he persuaded men to think that dark, well-cut and fitted clothes were smarter than 
colorful, ostentatious one, ones, you know, like the Prince Regent would wear like these, like he'd look like a he'd look like a massive peacock. He'd look like a trifle. Yeah. <laughs> when he went out there, he'd be like layers of like glittering and everything, and everybody was like, "Oh yes, very." And they'd be with their canes and jewels and everything. They look worse than the women. Yeah. You know the men did. But this Bo Brummel was like, oh no, dark colours and fitted. And that's where that kind of like cut out jacket came from, you know, and the high waisted like yeah. things, you know, like it looks like um, like what the red coats wore and everything right. like it was that. Right, it was a jacket that was shorter in the front yeah. and longer in the back. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Business in the front, <laughs> party at the back. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, it's like a cutaway cloth coat with brass buttons, plain waistcoat matching his pantaloons, well, which think... replaced the shorter breeches in about 1805. Yeah, I, I think the the... The more sparkly <laughs> looks, the more silvery and pastel-y looks, those were all very French, I think. Yes, that was, yeah. yeah. Like the the powder blues and the pinks and yellows yeah. and, and all the, like, swirly um, silver broca- brocades, is that what you call Brocade, it? Brocade, brocades, yeah. Yeah, um, sewn in there and, you know, just all those patterns, that was that was definitely much more flamboyant. And then, and then you went from that to, like... Um, American Revolution times where everything yeah. was definitely I wonder if it had anything to do with I mean we'd have to look at what was going on in the riding the, boots in the world economies the, you know yeah. Yeah. it might have been because oftentimes yeah. fashion changes like when the economy is low you're yeah. obviously not dressing like really flamboyant yeah, no. because it looks you know it looks bad <laughs> like it's not a good look to look yeah. so like rich and and eccentric you know when when people can't afford to eat <laughs> yeah no no the, and you know d- d- uh, i'll get to that when we when we get to that you okay. know so like, <laughs> the next one is the victorian era oh yes which you know women started i mean men started kind of dressing down with like you know like suits the suit that we know today Mm. kind of started coming out in Victorian era. Yeah. I mean the cut the cut anyway. Yeah. You know, I mean obviously there was like, you know, um you know, the shirts and stuff, there was like stylistic differences and everything, you know, the lapels or whatever. But, you know, the suit that we know today was largely formed back then. But the women had to wear these had to start wearing corsets. Mm, mm-hmm. I mean, they would probably be wearing them anyway, but oh, yeah. it was like, this was a big thing now. The corsets had to be tight. I think they started wearing them like in Elizabethan times. I think yeah. she started wearing yeah. corsets, yeah. And, you know, they had these like um, artificial crinoline wide triangular skirts. Oh, yeah. Um, that was supported on a steel wire. It was like a big, big massive bird cage. <laughs> yeah. And then you had a bustle to support the rest of the what mm. was going on over that. Yeah. So it was like, and, and it, it, they didn't have tools yeah. to make petticoats out of. They did, no. You know, so it's just like, yeah, they had to have something to uh, puff their dresses out. Yeah. I, I, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty look, but what you. You have to wonder where it ever came from, where the idea came from. Like and why they somebody had a high was like, hat and tight collars, yeah, and sleeves that further with restricted the cameo, them. The yes. collars and then clasped or and everything was just like and you know they the had front. to kind of walk like that, didn't they? Because they couldn't move any other way. <laughs> so you know you see the Victorian era people moving like yeah. that, and it's just like yeah they couldn't and they, the bustles they, the bustle the bustles were huge yeah. yeah and just like made you look like you had this like bird cage. <laughs> we you were sit- we were sitting around <laughs> on this birdcage, yeah. I mean, then as time, as, as kind of like the, the late Victorian era went on, women started going for more, like, slimming down version, kind of like what men were wearing. Mm. There was like this tailor-made movement, the Rational Dress Society. Yeah. And it was like a masculine style, plain tailor-made, you know, with the aim of making dress healthier and more comfortable, because, you know... You were killing yourself getting well, in that dress. Well, women literally were fainting all the time. They were fainting all the courses. time because they couldn't breathe. <laughs> yes. And then every time they moved, they just went, ugh, you know, and mm-hmm. collapsed, you know. Can you imagine? I mean, it's no wonder why so many women had miscarriages and why so many... Well, yeah. It's just like how... Because they continued to wear that kind of stuff even when they were pregnant. And it's like it took a team to get it off you. Yeah. It was like a suit of armor, really. Mm. Um... Going into the Edwardian era, 
which kind of lasted up until wartime. Um, so there was like a shorter, low-waisted dress introduced in about 1920. Loosely cut and concealing and not defining the figure, flat-chested women were about to become fashionable. <laughs> yeah, because in Victorian and hats were times small and, and yeah, and actually for for a long time before the, the Victorian period, times, the flapper period, it was all about pushing your pushing the boobs, boobs up, up, yeah, get them in the face. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, this was the eighteen eighties, not the nineteen eighties. Yes. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, oh. Women must have been just like, oh, when the flapper era came, you know, it's just like, well, the oh, flapper, we can, yeah, we, we actually have room to breathe. Yes, and I mean, you everything's know, the, 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 like the loose frilly and, and like, what's that? Fringe. Fringe, yeah. That fringe stuff. Yeah, and I mean, the tight curls. They showed their ankles. <gasps> they, showed, they showed more than their ankles, some of them. <laughs> um, and of course, the men's, you know, it, men's dress hasn't really evolved that much. No, since From the, then, yeah. Since then, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of the same kind of thing. It was like fit, tight fitting suit. It's 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 kind of gone. That's the only kind of thing. It's like tight fitting, then loose fitting, then tight fitting again, then loose again, uh, and then tight again. You yeah, know? it's like it's like anything else. You get tired of one thing, and you, you know, it's like when I was in high school, um, flared jeans and bell bottoms were back in style. And then, you know, shortly after that, it was all about the skinny jeans. And we're kind of in a skinny jeans phase right now. And then yeah. it'll be like wide legged coming back before yes, too Yes, yeah, no, that's, that's just... what happens with men's fashion. It just yeah. goes wide or skinny. And it's like, <laughs> you know, it's, um, you know, that, that's what it was. You know, the soft, fe- the hat and the spats protecting his shoes. You know, that was the big thing in the 20s and up yeah. until like the 40s, I guess. Mm. Um. But in the 30s, then, it started getting wide-legged. And the shoulders started... You know, they, and the zoot like, suits. The zoot suits, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was, like, square at the shoulder with um, a n- fairly natural waist, I guess, you know. It's interesting, because I like both looks, really. I can get into both both styles. Yeah, because I think men had shoulder pads in their, ja- in their suit jackets mm, at that time as yeah. well. But then when wartime hit... It was back to the basics for Everything British had people. To straighten up and yeah, no, no more loosey goosey anything. No, it was it was kind of like every you know people wore what they could afford and well, clothing right, rationing yeah. and everything. And it wasn't until 1947 when Christian Dior presented a fashion look with a fitted jacket and a nipped in waist, which everybody you know that's like the wartime look that they go for in these period dramas now. Mm. Is like that you know and a full calf length left length skirt and you know because you know it was like a use of fabric you know it was all this fabric you know and it was like oh you know you're using a lot of fabric there it's lavish you know because (laughs) of the thing and it became known as the new look you know Mm -hmm. and then of course like you know that's how it kind of remained until the 60s yeah and we all know what happened. And we all after know that. what happened then. <laughs> Mini skirts. But yeah, we'll Mary do a, Quant. We'll do another um yeah, I mean, we co- we kind of covered the 60s fashion in our Yeah. in our British Invasion podcast. If yeah. you guys haven't listened to that, go check that out. Um but yeah, we'll do another one of these episodes where we sort of just talk about um British fashion pieces that yeah. are more popular Oddities. in Britain or um that started in Britain and then came over here, something like that. Yeah. So look for that to come. I don't know when we'll get to it. We've got a, we've got a full schedule. We've for got December. a full schedule. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, I think that'll do us. That'll do us. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, we Thank appreciate you. your support. Oh yes, wonderful it was. If you'd like to support us further, be sure to check out our Amazon shop on our website. Amazon shop. You can use that link to just click through and do your normal Amazon shopping. If there's not anything in our actual um, recommended stores or stores, groups, categories, whatever you want to call it, on our shop, whatever <laughs> that you want, um, you can just use that to click through and do your normal holiday shopping, and we'll get a little bit of a commission off of Danny whatever Dyer. you, whatever you buy. Um, so thank you so much for your support, and we'll talk to you next time. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>